Welcome back to C Sharp Tutorials for Beginners. This time we're doing constructors. So before we jump in, go ahead and create a new class person and create two private fields, first name and last name. And now in your program, create a new person. Just like that. So we've created a lot of objects this way, but we've never talked about what this is. So when you say new person and then you include these parentheses, what you're doing is you're calling the constructor of the class person. And that passes parameters into the class person's constructor. Now we don't have a constructor defined in our class person. That's why we are calling the default constructor of class because every class has a built-in default constructor. So all that to say, what is a constructor? Well, a constructor is exactly what it sounds like. It constructs or creates new objects of your class. And if given, it sets initial values to them. And those values would be given in these parentheses here, passed into the constructor. So let's jump back to our person class here. Let's enter down from here and let's create a constructor. So a constructor looks like a method, except there's no return type because we're constructing an object with it. We're going to want to make it public because we're going to be able to construct our objects from other classes. And then the name of the method is going to be the name of the class. That's how it knows it's a constructor. So then we have the parameters list and the code block just like normal. So now we have this constructor method, and this would be equivalent to the default method that is automatically included with every class because we're taking no parameters and we're doing nothing. So we saw in the last couple of videos how we can access these private fields while keeping with encapsulation using getters and setters. But what if we only want to set them one time when we create our object? Or what if we want them to have immediate initial values? Well, that's when we want to use a constructor. And to do this, we do it just like we would a method. We'll say string first for our first name and we'll say string last for our last name. And then all we need to do is set our first name equal to first and our last name equal to last. And there we have a constructor. So when our object is created, it's going to expect two parameters and it's going to set these private variables immediately with the data that we're given. So now if we jump back to program, you'll see we have an error. And if we hover that, you'll see no argument given corresponding to the required formal parameter first. So it's telling us that person person takes string first and string last. So now when we create a person, we have to give it a first and a last name. And that's how our object will be created. So now that we have the first and last name passed in, we could come down here and create an another method that's give full name. And we could return our first name and our last name, just like we did before, and access these variables that were set by our constructor. Constructors can also be overridden, like we've seen methods be before. So if you wanted a default like constructor, you could add that. You could also add another constructor, maybe that took only first name, or maybe you had an age and you wanted to take a third parameter age and have a private int age up here. So you can have multiple constructors and that makes creating and managing your new objects a lot easier. So now you don't have to go and set these manually every time you create it. And you can also make sure you enforce certain variables are automatically set the minute an object is created. So now let's suppose we only have one constructor, our first and last name constructor, because we have to have a first and a last name for our application. And let's also say that we want to make sure that when this object is created, first and last name can never change. So even in a method inside the own class, we don't want to be able to do this. So to do that, you can set these read only. So if you say private read only string first name, this first name string can only be set right here like this or from your constructor. So only when the object is created can this variable be written to and every other place it's read only. So you can say here a read only field cannot be assigned to except in a constructor yada yada yada. So if we made both of these read only 
now we know that these fields are never going to change except when this object is created. So the last quick thing I want to go over is the constructor shortcut. Shortcuts are always good for saving a little bit of time here and there. And all you have to do is type in CTOR and then press tab twice quickly, F tab. And it will create a blank default like constructor for you and you can do it for as many constructors as you need, saving you a little bit of time. So next up, we're going to be doing properties, which are awesome and are going to make our lives a lot easier. So thank you for watching, everybody. I do appreciate you. And until next time, as always, take care.